Hi there, I'm Dr. Terry Shanefelt for UAB School of Medicine. Often when we conduct a study, we find that we have some missing values for several of our variables. In this video, I'm going to discuss how to deal with any missing data that you might have. So this diagram shows the basic approach to analyzing data collected during a study. In the first video in this series, I discussed the top three steps, and I finished with how to analyze your data file for errors, looking to see if you have consistency in your data, and looking for any missing data. In this lecture, we'll discuss what to do if you do find any missing data. Now, there's some important implications of missing data. First off, missing data can lower your power and affect the precision of confidence intervals estimated in your analysis. Now, this is a table containing data from a study on home ownership. Let's say we're interested in developing a regression model on the predictors of home ownership, and I label that as home in this table. And let's say we want to see what effect age and education have on home ownership. Furthermore, only the cases with full data on these three variables can be analyzed. So as we can see, only cases 5 through 8 will be analyzed because the other cases have missing data for our variables. As a result, we started with 8 cases but can only analyze 4 of them. So you can see that power will be reduced because we have a smaller sample size than we started with. Missing data can also lead to a biased estimate of the result of your analysis. Now this table on the left has some missing data indicated by the dots. And if you were to calculate the average age in this table, you'd find that it's 39. Now here's a table on the right that has all the data present. And if you calculate the average age here, you'll see that it's 29. So you can see we'd have a calculated a biased estimate of average age if we excluded the cases with missing data. And this is an important thing to remember about missing data. So thankfully, there's some things we can do to analyze for missing data and to deal with missing data. So there are three things you should do when you have any missing data. First thing you want to do is determine just how much data is missing. You can do a simple exploratory analysis and look at frequencies of your missing data. If it's a small percentage, say around 2% or less, you could consider just ignoring that that data is missing and delete those cases. If, you know, especially if you have a large data set, this small amount of missing data will have little effect on your analysis. It is important, though, to note that it's always better to analyze all data, if at all possible. The second thing you want to do is analyze the missing data to see if it's missing at random or if missing data is dependent on some other variable. And there are three mechanisms of missing data. And you'll actually want to just perform a statistical test called Little's Missing Completely at Random Test to determine if the data is missing completely at random or not. Missing completely at random means that the probability of missing data on, let's say, variable y is unrelated to value of y itself and the value of any other variable in the data set. If you find your data are not missing completely at random, in this case for the Little's Missing Completely at Random Test, the p value would be um, significant at point. 0.05 or less, then I'd think about discussing the implications of that with a statistician before performing any imputation methods, because it can be kind of difficult um, to deal with data that's not missing at random. Hopefully you'll find that your data is just missing at random, and that's one of the more common things to find. The third thing you want to do is analyze the pattern of missingness using the missing value patterns chart, and I'll show you an example of this on the next slide. And this is done to help you choose a method of imputation. So there are two patterns you can see. You can see a monotone pattern where data is missing, missing systematically. And on the chart, you'll see that all the missing cells and non-missing cells are touching. And again, I'll show you this on the next slide. Or you could find an arbitrary pattern where data is missing at random. And on the chart, you'll see clumps or islands of missing and non-missing cells. So let's see what this looks like. So the chart on left and is an expanded view of a missing values pattern chart. And what you have along the side over here is different patterns of missing variables. You have the various variables across the bottom. If you look at pattern number two here, and red is missing data and gray is not, if you look at pattern two, the only thing missing, indicated by this red bar, is a value for the first variable, neuroticism. Every other variable has data for pattern two, and each of these patterns has different variables that are missing. If values are missing in an arbitrary or random fashion, you'll see islands or clumps of red. You can see little islands of red surrounded by this gray ocean. 
Now on the right is a monotone example, and you can see all the missing data. In this case, it's indicated as white, and non-missing data is indicated as gray are all touching each other and form a very strong pattern. So again, why is this important? Well, if your data has a monotonicity uh, present, you should use one of the monotone methods of imputation. I'll discuss this a little bit later in a couple of slides. So thankfully, there are some methods for handling missing data. And once you've analyzed the mechanisms and patterns of missing data, you'll need to do something about your missing data. And there are some simple approaches and some more advanced approaches. But whatever approach you take, you should have good reasons for doing so. And you should disclose this in your data analysis plan or in the results. One thing you should absolutely never do is replace missing values with the mean of the non-missing values. And this will really bias your results and can really reduce the variability or variance in your data, which will have important implications in the analysis. So never do that. The best simple method to use is something called excluding cases pairwise. For some statistical packages, this could be set as the default. At other ones, you'll have to choose it. But in this method, it only excludes cases that are missing data required for that specific analysis. So in that example I gave you earlier of home ownership, um, if one case was missing age, it would exclude it for that. But for further analysis on some other aspect in that table, it won't exclude that particular case. So um, this is a, a nice method to use that will not significantly limit the total amount of data, assuming you don't have a lot of missing data. Now, in most statistical packages, like I mentioned, you'll have this option to tell the program how you want to handle missing values. In SPSS, which I use, you'll click on the Options button for whatever statistical test you're performing, and there's a Missing Values section. You just click on Exclude Cases Pairwise. Another potential op option is to exclude cases listwise. Now, this method excludes cases that don't have full data on all variables, and this can be a problem because it can really reduce your sample size. But it is an unreasonable, an unreasonable method if you're missing only a very small percentage of total sample size, let's say like 2% or less. Finally, if too much data is missing to exclude, then you want to use something uh, more advanced like imputation. And imputation replaces missing values with reasonable guess based on the distributions and relationships among variables in the data set. Now, there are several methods of imputation, and the method that you use depends on if your data are missing in monotone or an arbitrary pattern. And in SPSS, you can choose whether you want to use a monotone or the non-monotone Monte Carlo method in the Methods tab under Imputing Missing Data Values. And there will be a video linked to that later so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, this table will help you choose the imputation method based on the type of data that you have, so whether you have continuous, ordinal, or nominal data, and the pattern of missingness. So if you have a monotone missing pattern where they're all kind of clumped together and touching, you'll have to use one of these methods. If you have an arbitrary pattern of missing this, you can use one of these methods. And if it, it can get a little bit confusing, so I always recommend if you have questions, you can certainly look for lots of videos and read about it, but also it might just be best to discuss which method is best uh, with your local statistician. Now in this slide, I have some links to videos that will walk you through step-to-step -step how to perform the more common imputation methods, and I included videos for both SPSS and Stata. Um, I wanted to include things that are the more commonly used statistical packages. There are other videos on YouTube that describe this, also other videos um, for other statistical packages that you might be using. So in summary, if you have missing data, perform Little's missing completely at random test and hope that it's non-significant. Uh, next, you'll want to look at the pattern of missingness in the missing values pattern chart, and you'll be able to see whether it's monotone or arbitrary. And hopefully, if you're MCAR test is not significant, meaning things are missing completely at random. Hopefully your pattern is also arbitrary, like the one on the left in our previous slide. And then three, you could consider deleting cases pairwise if you don't have that much missing data, or you might want to go on and impute missing values. And once you've done this and have a full data set, now you'll be ready to explore your data and do some more exciting preliminary analyses.